Hello friends and welcome to another packing video. Today I am going to do something completely different. I'm going to be packing for a safari in Africa. Our tour is going to take us from Zimbabwe at Victoria Falls to Botswana where we'll do an African safari to see animals and then we're going to continue on to Cape Town and finish in Namibia. There are a lot of very special considerations for this particular trip, especially because I'm taking my 15 year old son with me and also because you have to pack just very different things for a trip to Africa. So let's have a look and see what I've chosen for this. All of course, as usual, in a backpack, which has to weigh at maximum 18 pounds, hopefully less. So let's see how I do. And I hope this will give you some ideas for your own trip to Africa. Okay, as usual, I have been piling all of the potential candidates for my trip onto the living room couch, which is great because it's by the front door so that when my packages from Amazon come, I just sort of toss everything on here. So let's have a look and see what I've got so far. Uh, you can tell before we even get started that there's a theme here with the colors. Everything is beige or cream or green, but almost nothing black. Actually, these things here that are black, I'm probably not even gonna take with me. And there's a really good reason for that. It's because in Africa, there are tsetse flies and they like to bite through clothes like this that are dark. So you don't wanna use anything black. You wanna use things that are light and beige. They don't suggest white because white is gonna get dirty really fast, although I'm not really gonna to listen to them on that. But you also don't wanna wear red because that'll distract from the animals on safari. So that's why we have the, this very muted color scheme. So let's just go ahead and dig in and see what I've got organized so far. Uh, first of all, I've got a hat. Just bought this at Costco the other day for about 15 bucks. I think I look pretty ridiculous in it, but it's gonna work 50 uh, SPF and it has the little toggle here so you can put it around your neck so it doesn't blow off when you are in the back of a Jeep because that's usually how you see animals in Africa is from the back of a Jeep. Uh, it is winter. It's August in Seattle, but it's uh, winter in South Africa. So I have to bring layers and that's going to be the important thing here. First of all, I need a warmth layer. So I bought this specifically for this trip. It's just a cream colored Columbia uh, fleece. Just It's a men's tall because I'm very tall, uh, but it's very, very warm and snuggly. This will be great for the airplane, and then this will also be great for uh, the animal viewing because in the morning you get up at like 6 o'clock in the morning or even earlier, and at this time of year it could be 30 degrees. It could also rain. If it rains, I picked up this at the Columbia Outlet actually. This is a waterproof shell, super lightweight waterproof jacket, but in the appropriate color, so the dark green. I have a waterproof co coat, but it's red, so I had to go out and get something different. So this will work out really, really well. At the Columbia Outlet, it was $30, which is not terribly expensive. Uh, so just a light windbreaker and shell. So that's my outerwear choices here, both from Columbia. And then I have another jacket item here. This I bought years ago from Ex Officio, and it's a hooded, super lightweight little zip-up jacket thing, but and you can see it has kind of this venting in the, in the fabric. The point of this is to be a sun shield, but it also has something in it called insect shield. It's supposed to ward off insects, does it? No idea. But because there are a lot of insects, mosquitoes and things, uh, this will be something I can wear even during the heat and be covered head to toe if I need to be. Uh, pants wise, I'm going to take at least three pairs, probably a fourth pair I haven't decided on yet, something comfortable for the plane. My first pair is from Prana. These are hemp, they're stretchy, but they're a great color, very neutral color, and very, very comfortable because they've got this stretchy waist. I'm a big fan of Prana, which is also a Columbia brand, actually. Uh, and you can just wear these on the plane even if you need to because they're so comfy and they've got pockets. And that's important for the, the safari piece is that we have pockets. Then we've got jeans, which I know you're not really supposed to bring jeans, but for this particular thing, this light color blue, they say is probably okay for a safari. It just is dark blue you don't want to bring. These are very, very comfortable jeans. NYDJ, is that what it is? Yeah, uh, they're very, very comfortable, stretchy jeans. And you, I could sleep in these if I had to. So I'm gonna bring my favorite pair of jeans. And then the dreaded, Pants with zip-off legs. I never thought I'd see the day when I bought myself a pair of pants with zip-off legs. I think they're so tacky, but you know what? They're made for safaris. 
That's what they're for. Because if we start our day at 30 degrees, I'm gonna want pants. But if we end our day at 85, which we probably will, I'm gonna want shorts. These fit me really well, they're stretchy. They are straight long, so they're not baggy. I don't like baggy pants, but they do have the zip, zippable pockets, which is important because on an African safari, you do need a lot of pockets for all the gear and things that you might wanna have on you for viewing animals. So yes, I know I, ne I said I would never wear these, but I'm taking it back because they are good safari wear. Got my packing cubes laid out, my usual Tom Bin packing cube. And then over here, this is just my pile of potential tops and bras and other things like that. I haven't made 100% choices on these yet, but I'm just gonna show you what I'm thinking. Tank tops. I love tank tops because you can layer them. This is a wool tank top. This is by Icebreaker. Very comfortable, wicking, and this wool is super soft. It's warm, but it's also cool conversely, and it is it washes up really, really well. I have a silk top that weighs nothing that I thought would be fun to have for uh, dress up, if I ever wanted to dress up for anything. And then I have a linen top, which is that same kind of green color. That's an athleta top. It's a tank top. And then I have a silk top, another layer that we can put over things, and a, a super lightweight silk knit top from REI. This is just a camisole that I got, and it's um, I can wear this underneath everything. So if I just sort of layered this, then this, then that white jacket, then uh, my other jacket over the top, I've got a lot of good choices. Uh, so that's my ideas for now for tops. Long sleeve top, I have this one here, which is just a white collar shirt. Like I said, they, they told me not to bring light, but only because it'll get dirty, but I can bleach it out if I have to. This is a very old top. I bought it Old Navy, just of this really light, super lightweight cotton. And that I think will be a perfect layering piece. And then a long sleeve white t-shirt. So just really simple stuff. And then uh, over the top, I brought what every safari wearer probably brings, safari goer, uh, which is a sleeveless vest with pockets. And again, not really like something I would buy myself, but it actually looks okay on and it's very practical. Uh, so this with maybe this underneath and uh, a pair of those kind of dust colored pants, I think that's probably what I'm going to end up buying. This is from Banana Republic actually, from their outlet. So that's pretty much all I've got for that. Short sleeves, I've got only two short sleeves. I've got a very simple blue t-shirt and this sort of dirt colored shirt here as well. So all of these things match because they're all these earth tones. They all stay kind of similar. And uh, I think that that's gonna work really well. Otherwise, other things I've got underpants here. Here's my stack of underpants. As usual, I've got the on gossamer ones which are very sheer and they'll dry. I have heard, and I don't know if it's true, but I've heard that a lot of hotels and, and things may not wash women's underpants for you. You have to do it yourself. That's fine. I do that myself anyway, uh, but I am going to bring a laundry sheet, a dehydrated laundry sheet with me to do that. These are my new favorite underpants. These are from Allbirds. They are wool. So wool underpants, again, are so comfortable and soft. They actually do dry pretty fast as well. So those are my underwear choices. And what else? Can't forget a swimsuit. So I have my favorite bikini with me. There we go. And I also am potentially going to bring a soft silk vest with me. This doesn't weigh anything at all. And I might wear this on the plane, but I'm not sure because that might be more than enough stuff. So that's the pile of clothing that I'm potentially gonna bring. But there are other things too. Um, so over here I have some other accessories. Oh, one more clothing item. This is a dress that I got at the Columbia outlet that's very cute. And it's made of like a material that feels like ripstop. So very, very light. It's got pockets. And I thought that would look really cute with just a pair of sandals. So you do want to have something to wear back at the resort when you're done with the safari just to relax in. So this will be that and I can layer it with any of those uh, longer sleeve shirts if I want to. All right, the extras, the other things I'm bringing. First of all, I'm bringing a book for the airplane. If you haven't read this series, highly recommend it, Ladies Number One Detective Agency. I read this probably 20 years ago and I thought this would be fun to read on the airplane and then just leave at the hotel. So fun little book. Then I have a waterproof poncho. 
I don't know if I'm gonna need this. It's huge though, and it covers your head and all the way down to your toes for Victoria Falls. This time of year, Victoria Falls probably isn't going to be that uh, watery, but other times of the year, you may get completely drenched. So we're gonna take one of these between the two of us and we'll see if we need it. Other thing I bought here, this is a great idea, Pelican. These are uh, floating cell phone covers. Uh, they're waterproof, so you just clip the, the top and you can also wear it around your neck. This will be very important, I think, for um, the falls, but also for any place that I might be concerned about losing my phone. So I've got one of these for me and one for my son. Water bottle. You can't drink the water there, but I thought we'd just get some really nice big uh, water jugs and then my son and I can refill. And then over here we've got the South Africa plug. It looks like this. You're gonna have to order this. You can't use something from your Europe stuff that you have to order one for Southern Africa. Uh, and I get one that has USB-C and then USB ports as well. So you may be wondering what bag I'm gonna bring. On this particular trip, one of us at least is gonna bring this Patagonia backpack. It's a 35 liter backpack and it's the simplest bag you'll ever find. It doesn't really have any pockets except for a front one, and it's just a big open space in the middle. It's got the, the mesh place to put your shoes, but it's a pretty simple bag. But what I like about it, it's tough as nails, it's waterproof, it's a really good choice for adventure travel. And this actually was purchased for us by my friend A. Pikul, who is an adventure tour guide in Thailand. This is one of the most common backpacks that tour guides have. So it's a Patagonia bag, 35 liter, very simple backpack, but will be perfect for what we're doing. If you're going on a safari, you have to be careful to ask, do you need a backpack or a rolling bag? We can take either on our trip, but there are some adventure operators that need you to bring a backpack rather than a rolling bag. For shoes, this is always the question, which shoes should I bring? Well, I just wasn't sure. And I looked through everything I had. I pulled out some of my favorites and this is what I've kind of boiled it down to. These are my Tiva Mush flip-flops, which I love so much. They're super lightweight. Usually I bring the wedges. In this case, I'm bringing flat ones just to save on space and weight because who cares about looks? These are very, very comfortable shoes. They even have an arch support in a flip-flop, which is shocking and they're very light. So that is my top pick as usual. Most of you who watch my videos own these shoes. I know you when I see you walking around in Europe and elsewhere because you're wearing my same shoes. So have a look for these. They're a wonderful shoe for all kinds of travel, especially for um, swimming, going into the water, hiking. You can even kind of do a little bit of hiking, I guess, in these, but they're very useful. Tennis shoes, I'm gonna bring one pair of tennis shoes and I haven't decided. One of them is on cloud. These are new, I, they're kind of the new trendy shoe. They're very comfortable. Uh, I do like them a lot. However, this pair of New Balance, they're called Fresh Foam, and I think you can find the link on my blog. They're not that cute and everything, but they weigh nothing, nothing at all. The downside is that the insole cannot be replaced. The insole on these can be replaced if you want to put something better in. These can't, but they're super duper light. We weighed them, and this comes in a couple of ounces lighter than the on cloud shoes. So it may be because of that that I bring these, because I am bringing three pairs total. So I might just bring those ones. Also light colors, again, no dark colors. So uh, that kind of fits the bill there. And then the shoe I'm gonna wear most of the time is a new shoe to me. These are Easy Spirits. I thought to myself, you know, a boot would be ideal for doing all these safari things and outdoor things because they protect your ankles, they're comfortable, they can get wet. These are vaguely waterproof, water resistant at least for Victoria Falls, that would be nice. Um, and they're quite comfortable. So a nice easy shoe for everything you might need for a safari. I mean, this is actually kind of the perfect shoe. You could even do light hiking in it. It's got really good traction on the bottom. So this is a very versatile adventure travel shoe. I'm really excited about wearing these. Uh, they do go all the way up to 12s and they do also have an insert so you could take that out and put in your own insoles if you wanted to. So it's probably gonna be this shoe, this shoe, and this shoe. And believe it or not, three pairs of shoes, they don't weigh much at all. I think this is under two pounds for three pairs of shoes. As far as socks go, I'm gonna bring my compression socks as usual, but then I also decided for the safari days to buy a pair of nice smart wool socks that have a nice cushion to them because it is gonna be really cold in the morning. So this will be a nice combination uh, to keep my feet warm and dry all day. So a few other things I'm going to be bringing along with me. Number one, instant coffee. Now this isn't Starbucks Via. I'll probably bring some Starbucks Via as well. Uh, the, apparently the coffee there 
is not that great. And they also just have kettles usually in a lot of rooms with Nescafe. So if you don't like Nescafe, you might wanna think about bringing something else. So I might get some of the Starbucks Vias as well. I brought a monocular as well. This is so that I can see animals really far away just with one eye. But the fun part about this is it comes with this little kit here, which is to mount it on your phone. So your phone can turn into a telephoto lens camera, which is very clever. I don't know if it's gonna work. I think it will. We've been practicing with it. Looks like it'll work fine. I'm bringing a suntan lotion stick with me because that is really important, SPF 50. Uh, and you wanna have that in your pockets at all times because even if it can be cool, it'll be very sunny and this will be very important. Snacks, I'm bringing snacks. I have a teenager with me, but also you get up at four o'clock in the morning to go on these safaris on the animal drives and then you don't have breakfast until 10. So I don't want any grumpy passengers and I don't want any grumpy teenagers. So I have trail mix, I have pretzels and I have beef jerky. And we also have some other uh, snack cakes as well. We're gonna have in our bags just in case. As far as paperwork goes, first of all, I have a, an envelope full of cash. I brought a lot of money with me because uh, Zimbabwe actually uses the US dollar as their primary uh, currency. So you have to bring US dollars in small bills, ones, fives, twenties. And I'm gonna bring probably about $500 worth of that. I also have cash to pay for other things for my tour group, but for the regular person traveling who's not leading a tour, please bring small bills. You can obviously get money uh, in Rand in South Africa, and you'll be able to get Pula in Botswana, but Zimbabwe does require the US dollar. So just go to your bank, ask them for small bills and bring at least a few hundred dollars so that you can uh, pay for things and buy stuff if you want. I also have a printout here of all of my vaccinations. I actually did go to a travel consultation to find out which vaccinations I needed to update and what things they suggest for those countries. And we had them all printed out on the letterhead of my hospital. So if we arrive and they have a question, they can have a look at this. We're gonna need our passports. And for my son who is 15, we've been advised that he needs to bring his original birth certificate as well. I don't know why, but you know what? I'm not gonna question it, I'm just gonna bring it. This is the best way to get this stuff done. So there you go, that's what I'm bringing. I'm sure there's gonna be other stuff as well. And I'll continue to update it. What I'm gonna do is put together a list associated with that, a blog that you can find on my website at adventureswithsarah.net. Also, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can find in the comments section as well links to other packing suggestions and my Amazon shop uh, where you can click on some of these things to order them for your own safari. Please go ahead and comment any questions or ideas that you have for your own bag and as always thanks for watching and travel light nobody ever said I wish I'd have brought more.